My name is Melissa Joseph, and I'm an artist. I live in Brooklyn. I worked as a textile designer when I was a younger, um, when I was younger, and those textile relationships have stayed part of my my material vocabulary. As you develop, I think, as an artist, and you start to work more holistically, you find that everything is sort of interconnected. So one thing might not carry all of all of the content that you're trying to communicate. This year, I was simultaneously with Brick, I was doing a residency at the Textile Arts Center in Brooklyn and Gowanus. Um, and I discovered this process of felting with wool, um, both wet felting and needle felting. And doing that along with learning video, which I had no real video experience. I had done a little bit with iMovie and I applied to Brick thinking I could start to maybe focus on incorporating sound into some of my textile objects. I took most of the sound classes and the camera classes in, in person. And then COVID hit and I started doing the online classes. And with the online ones, I did an intro to Premiere that was really helpful because that's an intimidating program. What I felt like I was doing was just laying like a, a baseline for um, kind of understanding some of these programs. So once I was able to sort of have that door opened to understand that possibility, um, it became really exciting. Um, and all of a sudden, I, I just, the ideas just started coming and coming and coming. And throughout the entire experience, I am a collector of everything. I collect things from the ground, I collect sounds, recordings, I collect videos and images and screenshots and um, and so it, it offered a way for these different collections of mine to come together. These found sounds were meeting with found objects and imagery that um, in, a, in a way that um, defied time, but also anchored it in this moment of, of um, COVID for sure. The person that I really need to thank in this process for opening up a world to me is Basira Khan, who was my mentor. They saw the first few stop motion practice videos that I made, and they recommended that I see this movie called the Color of Pomegranates. I felt like I couldn't believe I hadn't seen that film before. And then I felt like every experimental film I ever saw could not have existed without that film. And it, it was so beautiful. It showed me how video could be a still life painting. That sort of guided me and the aesthetic I think of my whole Piece. I think anyone who has seen that film will will see the the influence that it had on the piece that I actually made. Even though mine was stop motion and that one was live action. Ninja. And one of the best things that another I mean, there's so many good things. I keep saying this is the best. This is the best. But I really, really appreciated getting to work with Rachel on my project towards the end, and we had weekly meetings and check-ins, and so that was so helpful because it. I could, you know, the intro classes are great, you're learning how, but then you need troubleshooting along the way that can be specific. And so I could ask her questions very specific to the project that I was working on. So the theme of my piece was about pockets. And I had been doing this residency at the Textile Arts Center and we were studying textile history as a part of that. And, and there was a chapter about pockets and it was a short chapter, but it was, it, I honestly probably don't remember most of the rest of the class because I, it, this is how it happens. Something, you know, something takes root and then, and that's the, the line of inquiry where you go. So, so I started to research the history of pockets as political spaces because they were not afforded to all people um, by race and gender, and that that's the, the underlying thing that drives my work is, is this idea that 
women didn't have pockets, that sleeves were forbidden to have pockets, um, made these tiny spaces um, microcosms for larger spaces that, that we are d deprived of. So I wanted to think about that, and usually I my work tends to ask more questions than get answers. I, I went through a lot of iterations. I thought about building these physical pockets. At one point, think thought about recording from the community, people sort of speaking about their experiences with um, how they feel about space and because pockets talk about property, privacy, um, there's just so there's so many things that they address um, or can address. So this project ended up with me coming up with. I thought about what kinds of things we we are carrying and different ways I could conceptually like represent some of these things. Um, so sometimes it would be sounds that I had collected from walks, daily walks, sounds from my own history, like um, music, my, my, my dad's voice, my niece's voice, you know, these things that are um, private but, but that we carry with us. Um, and then sometimes there were photos, there was one where, you know, I, I was thinking about um, how we can choose some of that. So sometimes the pockets would open slightly, sometimes they would open more fully. You would have more idea of what was in them and or less. All of the objects were things that were meaningful to me. But something I'm learning in my larger practice about, in general is it's more effective to communicate to others through specificity than through generality. Somehow when it's too general, um, it might actually fall flat or be hard to relate to, but somehow if it's very specific, there's so much embedded in it that people can relate to it in a, in a, in a different way. Um, because they might not relate exactly to what you're saying, but there's something that is that they recognize in their own life. Um, and that's what I'm trying to communicate, these emotions and familiarity that connect us all. What happens in the work is I'm, I'm constantly collecting and holding, but the holding period or the incubation period can vary. It can be like a day or it could be uh, decades. So, so it's this idea of bringing things together and then the artist is like a node where, where all of these things kind of intersect. And I've, I've been given the criticism that my work didn't, doesn't have a time-based element to it. Um, and I've thought a lot about that since I received that criticism and what does that mean and how do I address that and and what I discovered through this project and through some of the other collages is the time-based element for me becomes the material itself because it's it's from a place so so every sound in the video is a, a specific place in time This whole residency was a great learning experience and um, a safe space to try things, uh, which artists don't always have. Um, the, the sense of community was just really nice. I just have a lot of things that I'm grateful for. And um, before we started recording, I mentioned this, but having something kind of tethering in a time where the world was very uh, uncertain, it was it was really nice. I got little bits and pieces of so many things that are gonna feed me for a long time. And I think, you know, the the residency moved with the time and, and you know, adjusted for what what was going on in a way that was really hard.